Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to be talking about the Filmic RGB module. Like most modules in uh, Dark Table, there is a big clue in the name of the module. Filmic. And this module can be used to reproduce the tone and color of old classic film. However, again, like other modules, or actually most modules in Dark Table, it doesn't stop there. Or we can use it for other reasons as well, mainly to expand or contract the dynamic range of the image. What it does is it protects the colors and contrast in the midtones, but it can help you recover the shadows and the, compress the bright highlights and dark shadows. You will need to do some extra steps to recover the highlights, but we'll talk about those as well. The user manual recommends some prerequisites to get the most of this module. We'll go through them one by one. The first one is capturing ETTR. ETTR is exposed to the right, which means when you're taking the photo, make sure that you expose it in such a way that the histogram is as far to the right as you can without burning the highlights. All right, it's too late to do that for this photo since it's been taken a few years ago. We'll make do. The next one is to adjust for the midtones. To do that, you go into the exposure module and you add some exposure compensation until the midtones are exposed well. We don't have to worry about losing the highlights because those will be recovered in the filmic RGB module. However, what they warn about is having negative pixels in the black area. And that, especially for the Canon apparently, uh, the black level might result in crushed blacks and negative pixel values. And then you would have to adjust the black level correction until you have no negative values in the black. Let's do that oh, the other way. I don't know how that will work. I'm just now testing it. Okay, doesn't look all that great, but we'll see how it will go. Next, they recommend using a high quality demosaicing method. Oh, we'll go into the demosaic module and I'm going to choose a maze and then they recommend using a denoise if the picture has a lot of noise in it it doesn't I'll leave it and fixing the white balance I'm going to do that in the color calibration module which we've discussed already so you can look it up in the video series if you need a refresher or if you'd like to learn more about it. I'm gonna use a AI method and that's it. The fourth prerequisite is to avoid using the base curve. Well, I've stopped using it as part of the scenery third workflow so it shouldn't be enabled and it's not so we're golden. Now, for the Filmic RGB module proper, we have five tabs. The first one is Scene, and that's the input settings of the scene, defining the middle gray, white, and black of the photograph. Next, we have the Reconstruct tab, and this one offers some tools to handle blown highlights. After that, we have the Look, which is mainly the contrast. It's an S curve, similar to the base curve that we weren't supposed to use. Next, we have the display tab, which defines the output settings. So these are the settings required to map the image to the display. Last, we have the option settings, which contains some advanced options for the module. The graphic display here has multiple views. You can cycle through them using this button here. However, we'll leave them till the end. It will be easier to go through what they are after we learn more about the actual module settings and output. 
So let's start with the first tab, scene. You've got here some familiar controls that look like the controls on a levels module. However, the levels module is uh, used for display referred pixel values, so between 0 and 100%. And Filmic allows us to work on scene referred pixels, so between minus infinity and plus infinity. The first slider is white relative exposure. This one is the number of stops between the scene's middle gray luminance, which is here, and the scene lum luminance that will be remapped to display pure white, so peak white. So, i.e., this is where the pixels in the image that are at that level will be mapped to 100% as pure white. You can use the pipette here to choose a part of the image that will be translated to pure white. Of course, if you choose something that's not really the in the highlights, then you will blow out every single pixel that's above that value. And you can set it manually. The next one is black relative exposure and you guessed it it's the same as the first one but it helps us set the black value so it's the number of stops between middle gray and the scene luminance that will be remapped to display pure black pure black what that means is that again this is the value in the image the pixels with these values will be remapped to zero luminance and pure black and everything below that will be clipped. You can as well use the pipette to choose it or you can use it, do it manually. The third one is the dynamic range scaling and it lets you either expand or shrink the dynamic range which is the difference between the pure blacks and the pure whites. Pulling it to the right, see, shrinks the dynamic range and to the other side will expand it. Of course, you can do that, then you might have to go back and fix the other settings to avoid clipping any highlights or shadows. And the last option is the auto-tune levels, which does all of this for you automatically. Before we try that one, let's see what the effect of the filmic module on this photo is for now. That's the photo without it. And that's the photo with it. All right, I'm going to reset it. And let's see what the auto-tune does. Well, it's not a bad job, is it? You might want to fix some of the highlights or maybe a bit of the shadows, but it's a good place to start. Next, we have the Reconstruct tab. And this one is designed to help you reconstruct some highlights. Mainly, it's for the sun or if you had some uh, spotlight or uh, street light that's uh, really exposed to the right and clipped and you couldn't fix while taking the, uh, the photo. It's not designed to recover huge areas that have been uh, overexposed. So to talk about the reconstruct tab, we'll switch to a more appropriate uh, photo. This one has the use case that's described in the manual, which is an overblown sun. Let's see how that works. The first slider is the threshold slider. It defines the limit above which the pixels will be affected by the reconstruct tab. That is, any pixels that are brighter than the default of plus three now will be reconstructed. 
of course you can change that for to the left for lower values which means more pixels will be affected and higher values which means less pixels will be affected to test how it works I'm gonna first go back to the scene tab and make sure that I have some blown up highlights all right now I would like to isolate those areas that are blown out or clipped for reconstruction however it's difficult to guess at what th the threshold should be so I'm going to make use of this display highlight reconstruction mask button to display the current mask and then we can change it there you go maybe a bit too much as soon as you have the areas that you think are clipped in the highlights then your mask is correct next we have the transition slider and this one is used to soften the transition between the clipped and valid pixels moving the control to the right will increase the blur in the mask so the transition is smoother and if you move it to the left then the transition will be harder the next section is called balance and it's called balance because you're trying to balance between two effects of the algorithms for instance in the first one you're trying to find the balance between the structure and the texture and then bloom reconstruct and gray colorful details the first one is structure texture structure is painting in a smooth color gradient and texture it's trying to reconstruct the texture using the sharp details from the unclipped pixel areas by default it sets 0% which means that both will be used equally however depending on how clipped are the three channels in your highlights you might want to try moving it towards structure more or toward te texture more let's go to extremes to see what that does maybe zoom in to see if there's any effect that's now completely structure so it's trying to fill it using a gradient and to the other side is completely trying to fill it using the te uh, texture from the edges next to it if you have uh, only one channel or two channels are clipped like it is here I can see that it's only the red channel that's clipped then according to the manual it's better to try to get a little bit more texture because there might be some detail within the highlights that can be reconstructed and that is a bit true but I don't know if I like the effect it will vary from one image to the other however if all three channels so RGB are clipped then it's better to pull it towards structure and try to get a gradient fill the next slider is bloom reconstruct this one controls how the algorithm tries to reconstruct sharp details in the clipped areas so by default it's on 100% so it tries to maximize the sharpness of the detail in the clipped area however if we move it to the left then we will move more into bloom which would apply a blur that would ac approximate the blooming effects uh, that you get from traditional film and the last slider is gray colorful details and this one does exactly what it says on the box it defines whether the algorithm will try to recover colorful details or gray details by default it's on 100% color and as we move into gray the recovered highlights will turn more gray 
we'll stop here for this time and we'll continue with the last three tabs in the next episode. I hope that you found this video interesting. If you have any questions, corrections or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.